Hey, what's up? Welcome to another Mustard Seed message. My name is Sean, and as always, I really do pray that you are blessed. As we lift up the Word of God, let's rejoice and receive and believe in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 34, 1 to 8. Let's jump right in and see what we find. It says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. I got a pretty intense question that I want to ask you guys. Have you ever experienced the acute fear of the potential of imminent death? Have you ever faced death right mono a mono and just were convinced that that was a real possibility that you may die at any moment? A while back, probably about 10 years-ish ago, My friend Kevin and I were walking down Beacon Hill Park along the water and it was that peaceful, easy feeling. The sun was coming in in such a beautiful way because it was dawn and the orange skylight you could see in the ocean and the breath of fresh air walking through the park. It was just beautiful. And as we're walking along the shoreline, we reach a fence that in essence says, stop, you can go no farther. And you're thinking kind of thing like, why didn't you tell me three kilometers ago that this trail was closed? And we were in a proverbial split in the road. We could do the adult thing and turn back a couple kilometers to get back to the parking lot to where our car is parked. Or we could climb up the 200 meter cliff right beside the fence. That was a shortcut to get to our vehicle. Well, I'll tell you what. There really wouldn't be a story to tell right now if we didn't try and climb up that cliff. Right? So we start climbing. It's 200 feet, everything's going good. But can you guess what happened next? You might be able to, if you were paying attention to the story earlier, it was dawn. But as the earth keeps spinning, the sun ends up on the other side of the earth and the light that was shining from it was gone like yesterday. And the next thing that you know, we are in the middle of the cliff with a 100 meter fall right below us. And I can't see one meter ahead of me. And I come to this stunning conclusion. And I say to my friend Kevin, Kevin, I think that there's a possibility that we just might die today. 
and the grip that I had on the cliff literally clenches on as if my life depended on it. The cold sweat starts running down my brow and I am frozen with fear. This is not my proudest moment, I can tell you. I felt powerless. I felt like I was an infant and I didn't want to move. You know, in everyday life, we can find ourselves in anxiety around not wanting to make another person mad and worrying that they don't like us or maybe we're concerned about the bills that we have to pay or maybe our fears are coming from a project that we don't want to face that's standing in front of us. But tell you what, when the fear of death comes, those things start to fade away. And then no longer is there a concern. It's only what's happening right in this moment that is that concern. And and it's got to be a top five fear of at least everybody in the world. I mean, let's be honest. That imminent sense of death is a very scary situation. And that is the situation that David is in as he writes... Psalm 34. David is literally being pursued to be taken out by a king named Saul. And in his retreat, fearing for his life, he thinks to himself, what is the one place that Saul will not come to look for me? In the enemy's camp. He retreats to Gaul, the place that is an enemy of Israel, knowing that Saul won't pursue him there. He's following this wisdom of an of a ancient Greek historian, Thudius, that friends and enemies are made by time and circumstance. And the circumstance that he was in right now is that Gaul was looking like a better friend in this moment than an enemy. And so he goes there, but the plan backfires. As the people start seeing the, the David that was once their nemesis in their lands, aren't they, they're, they're saying, hey, isn't this the guy that was our enemies? Isn't this the guy that, that, w- that fought against us? Who is this David in our territory? And when David hears the people speaking like this, he goes bananas. He goes yellow belly. The exact biblical translation, yellow belly. He is fearful for his life. And what does any sane person do in a situation where he fears that someone's going to kill him. What does the same person do? Well, he acts like he's crazy. He spits into his beard. So there's drool hanging off of his chin, and he starts to write random nonsensical things on people's doorposts. And so when the king hears that David is in his territory, he says, oh, don't worry about it. That guy's lost his mind. And so... David escapes death. Like a king who was about to be put in checkmate in a game of chess, narrowly moving away his pieces to not get stuck into that position, David escapes death. And it is in that context And in response to that situation, the psalm that we just read in Psalm 34 was written. As we grab a hold of the context and understand the scripture a little bit more, let's worship the Lord. And we'll go back to the scripture and dig a little bit deeper. Because you are here, moving in our midst.
That psalm that we read in the beginning of the sermon was a pretty beautiful expression of, of praise, wasn't it? Probably good enough to read it again to refresh ourselves. Let's do that. Psalm 34, once more in a meditative state. Here we go. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. He delivers them. Take and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him what david is saying right now is thank you god <laughs> hallelujah thank you for delivering me from saul the guy who was trying to kill me thank you god from delivering me from my enemies the people of gaul who were looking at me and they're like shouldn't we be taking this guy out hallelujah but this psalm, it shines insight into that story in a deeper and a more profound way. It's saying, look, this is what really was going on with David in the midst of that narrative of him being in Gaul. In the same way that I was frozen on the side of that cliff with my heart palpitating and fluttering with fear, I was frozen. David was in a similar situation with a hundred feet cliff down on the bottom of his feet and facing death right in the face. But instead of freezing with fear, what does David do? 
something quite bizarre. This psalm shows it. Let the afflicted rejoice. I will extol the Lord at all times. I will praise his name always. Instead of being frozen with fear on the side of the cliff, David starts to praise the Lord. Yes, there's people pursuing him to kill him. Yes, he's got fear of death, but let the afflicted rejoice. David starts to worship and praise God not because of an absence of issues in his life, but despite the troublesome situations that he's found himself in, despite the th scenario that is unfair, he starts to rejoice. The problem that we have is that when the thunder is clapping, when the lightning bolts are smacking all around us, when the wind is blowing sideways and resisting everything that we do, and the rain is blowing down the collars of our shirts, we don't feel like giving God praise. It's not the initial intentions of our flesh to give God praise in those moments, but the irony and what we can see is the miraculous deliverance is in the praises of his people. Not because of an absence of problems, but despite them. It was the fear that froze me to the side of that cliff. But blessed are those that trust in the name of the Lord in verse 8. It's almost a cliche at this point, Churchill's quote, but we'll say it because it's worth singing. We have nothing to fear except fear itself. Fear was not going to deliver me from the side of that cliff. It was what was preventing me from moving forward. That fear was a result of looking at the deadly situation that I was in, but I needed a greater force to oppose the situation that I was in. Has anybody who's listening to this ever experienced someone who was very angry on the road? One would call it road rage. Has anyone experienced road rage themselves in this place? I used to experience it all the time. And let me tell you, friends, it was ridiculous. There would be someone that would cut me off and then slow down, and I would be so upset. I would be so steamed. And by the time that I was able to pass this person, as I would lift up my right hand to show them a, a symbol that is unspeakable, I realized that it's some pleasant looking elderly woman with very thick glasses on and it's like oh my goodness what am i what am i doing and the lord started to minister to me in those moments and this is what he said instead of getting so upset say god bless you and start praying for those people and so the next time someone cut me off God bless you. <laughs> Literally forcing this thing out of my mouth. God bless you, you sweet saint. I love you in the Lord. And over time, what started to happen is that road rage started to dissipate. And the words that proceeded out of my mouth, that counter force of faith in that moment of anger started to take root and no longer was there road rage. I needed to believe in something that I wasn't feeling at that time. I needed a greater opposing force. Now friends, let us understand that 
we're not being called to over spiritualize anything that I'm saying here. Jesus was described as one who has many sorrows. And when are, there's situations that are difficult, there is a time to weep and there's a time to rejoice. What we're being called to in the midst of this principle of counteracting the forces of darkness with praise and rejoicing and trust, we're not being called to push down and deny and over-spiritualize events. But that being said, with that clearly understood, it's also equally as true to say that our Christian faith is a heck of a lot more fun to be a little bit more radical and not make sense all of the time. It is a lot more of an adventure to rejoice in the face of tragedy. It is a lot more fun to not allow the ways of this world to enter into our system to cause us to be downtrodden all the time, but to give God praise when it doesn't even make sense. That's when people are looking at the church and saying, these guys are peculiar people. They just won't go down. They continue to praise God in the face of all circumstances. Friends, do we praise the God, the God that, that died for our sins? Do we praise the Lord? Do we only praise the Lord when our groceries come in and our cupboards are full, our gas tank is, is topped up and our mortal flesh is not afflicted with disease and pain? No. We will praise the Lord at all times, even when there is affliction, even when there is sword, even when... There is persecution. Yes, we will praise the Lord. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because God is with us and we will keep praising Him because it's a lot more fun like that. Anyways, we sought the Lord and He answered and He delivered us from our fear. Let the afflicted rejoice. Friend, do you know that faith has a language? Faith speaks. And what is faith saying in those troubled moments? You may be dealing with a situation even right now in your life. And darkness is encamping itself all around you. And all that we see with our physical eyes is troubles. What is faith saying? Because the Lord is speaking into that situation, not on what we can see in the physical. There's an ascension taking place that is not dictated in the circumstances that you are in. Friends, those who put their trust in God will be blessed. Magnify the Lord with me. Oh, let us praise God together. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.